Hey guys, doing a video here on my Fluval Flex 15 gallon all in one. I'm going to be talking through the filter maintenance of it. Um, we're going to talk through what I did during the ramp up phase in order to build up that bio load in the filtration. And then I'm going to talk about how I maintain it. Of course, we want to make sure that we maintain bio load in the filtration at all times. That way our tank uh, stays healthy and happy. So I'm going to talk about the frequency in which I change things out, uh, the frequency in which I maintain each of those filter medias in the three chambers in the back. So as you can see right now, we have uh, a couple bubble tipping enemies in there, as well as my clownfish kind of bouncing back and forth and, and hosting both of them. And we want to make sure that the uh, tank is well maintained to keep all this life going. So I'm going to break it down fully. I'm going to go through each chamber. Uh, it's got three chambers, and I'm going to go through each chamber, and I'm going to show you what's in each chamber, as well as what I do to maintain each chamber. So for the purposes of this video, chamber one is going to be that far left chamber, chamber two is in the middle, and chamber three is that return chamber with the pump in it. As far as the contents, chamber one has Chemi Pure Elite, carbon, ceramic media. Chamber two has a filter pads, Purigen, and Roafoss. Chamber three has ceramic media, and then it has that the heater and the return pump. So let's talk a little bit about the maintenance frequency. So filter cleaning, I do this every four weeks. That means I end up cleaning the filter 13 times a year, not 12. So I clean it every four weeks. Each of those cleanings is combined with a water change. Um, I do a water change in between those uh, cleanings at the two week mark. So two weeks I do a water change and then at the four weeks I do the filter maintenance combined with a water change uh, and am able to maintain my bio load and get the filter going that way. So here we have what I've done. I, yes, I did an Excel spreadsheet for it. You can see the ramp up there and the next year maintenance. So if we're looking at the ramp up, the pad in the center uh, chamber, chamber two, I cut in half and I made it into two pads. So that's why you see pad one and pad two. It's that center chamber pad, but it's cut in half. So there's pad one and pad two. As you can see, I ran them for a long time in order to build up that biomedia. Ceramic the same way. I have ceramic in chamber one and chamber three, so I can change out half at a time. Same thing with the pad, so I can change out half at a time. And I over, I ran those for a long time in order to build up the bio load in that as well. And then as you can see on the Chemi Pure Elite, every three months was the change for that one. The Purigen and the Roafoss, um, I let them go a little bit the first round, but then you can see it kind of snaps into a every other month, so they ran for 60 days, or 28 times 2, 58 days, 56 days. Um, and then the charcoal is changed every month. So if we're looking post the ramp up phase, um, you can see there on the filter pads that they're essentially changed every six months. So two pads, that means I go three months, change one, three months, change one, three months, change one. So the pad gets a full six months of use before it's pulled out with and replaced with a fresh one. And when I pulled out at that time and replace it with a fresh one, the other pad already has three months of use on it. So it's holding that bio load. As you can see, I do the exact same thing with my ceramic media, run it for six months. I have two of them. 
and I change each every three months. So it has a six month life. And when I pull one out, the other one already has three months on it. And then I continue my rotation with the Chemi Pure Elite of every third month, the Roa and Purigen every other month, and activated carbon every month. So let's look at an actual cleaning of chamber one. So again, the contents of chamber one include Chemi Pure Elite, ceramic, and carbon. Uh, so this is the Chemi Pure Elite. Uh, the bag comes right in that container and I just take it out and use the bag. Obviously this is carbon. I like the pelleted carbon and then um, I just put it in, of course, a media bag, and then this is the ceramic media. I do like the actual ceramic media, not the other uh, types of media. Uh, my just my preference is ceramic. I think it's a little more porous and does a little better job. So when I'm cleaning chamber one, I'll get some water in a cup from the tank, and I will put it into a bucket. Um, once I put a, a scoop of water in the bucket. I will then remove all the medias from the uh, chamber and I clip them in place. I don't, I don't want them just all falling to the bottom. The ceramic media will be at the bottom, but the uh, Chemi Pure Elite and the Carbon I clip in place. That way they kind of hang there and get good flow around them. I don't want everything just sitting on top of each other at the bottom because then it, then it doesn't necessarily get the flow that it needs. So there's the, the carbon, or I'm sorry, the uh, ceramic media coming out of the bottom of the chamber there. And uh, now we've got to clean everything off. So first thing we're gonna do is we need to make sure that we are maintaining that chamber. So I'm gonna take a turkey baster. I'm gonna push all the air out of it. I'm gonna put it to the bottom of that chamber and I'm going to suck up all the gross stuff that is settled in the bottom of that chamber. So obviously, as, as I got the turkey baster down there, I'm releasing the bulb and letting it provide a little bit of suction on what's down at the bottom. You can see all that stuff in there. And then I'll squirt it into the cup um, just kind of to show you what debris is at the bottom of that chamber. So again, I'm going to go through and clean the bottom of each chamber as I go. I don't want debris sitting in there and um, producing uh, negative things such as, you know, phosphates and, and things like that that are bad for my tank. So don't forget to clean the bottom of the chamber itself, not just the media. You need to actually clean the, cha clean the chamber itself. So then I'm going to take each of these items and I'm gonna clean them off in that clean water. So I'm rinsing off the ceramic media here, and then I will take that ceramic media and it will go right back into chamber one. Um, now that chamber one has been cleaned out, I'll go ahead and drop it right back into the bottom of chamber one. So we're gonna repeat this um, with the other medias. Again, uh, having a little difficulty getting it down, down there, but we're going to repeat this with the other medias. We're going to clean off the um, carbon and the uh, Chemi Pure Elite. The carbon uh, is changed monthly, so I'm going to dump that out. And I'm going to clean all that gunk and debris off of that bag. I don't want to put back a dirty filter media bag. So this is all the carbon dumped out. That's about how much there was. We clean off the filter media bag, make sure we get a nice clean bag in there. And then I take loose carbon and I put it in a bucket with some clean water and uh, clean it off and make sure that it stops fizzing and um, it gets all that kind of dusty debris off. And then I will put that back into the filter media bag. Um, I'm going to, for the, uh, Chemi Pure Elite, I'm literally just going to give it a quick kind of 
flip around and, and rinse to just get debris off the outside of the bag because if there's debris on the outside of the bag, then it's not really getting good flow through the bag, which means the media isn't doing what it needs to do. So I do want the outside of that filter bag to be clean before I put it back. So flow will go through the bag and I will get the benefit of the contents within the bag. And again, I put it in there and I clip it in place because my preference is to do that. Um, I know you can buy media baskets and thing like, things like that. My preference is just to clip it there in place. So looking at chamber two, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the contents of chamber two. So chamber two has that big filter pad that I have cut in half and created two pads. Uh, it has the row of FOSS and it has the Purigen. Here's the Purigen. And here is the row of FOSS that I have in there. So again, we'll get some water from the tank and we will take that tank water and we will put it into the bucket. And this is the water we will use to clean our media. So we're gonna put the filter pad in there and um, clean that up as well as the two different medias. Uh, here it is, pulling the filter pad out. As you can see, it is cut and um, I'm pulling it out around that light bracket. So I do have my Purigen stuffed in that first chamber of that filter pad. And then I'm gonna have the row of FOSS um, stuck in the bottom chamber of that filter pad. So we'll remove all that and get the contents out of chamber two. And then we will start cleaning those filter pads. Uh, very important, uh, know which is filter pad one, filter pad two. That way your long-term maintenance, you're changing the right filter pad. Um, I normally just clean one pad at a time, uh, but just kind of clean them both here this time so you can see just how dirty they actually get. And you can see that water is just yucky and muddy. So we will uh, dump that water. We will put more water into the bucket from the tank and we will repeat. And we will continue cleaning those filter pads until we get uh, water that essentially comes out somewhat clean. Um, as you can see, that water was somewhat clean. It was still a little dingy, but it wasn't dirty, dirty like you saw the first round. So here's what you can see. The uh, row of FOSS, what it looks like used is kind of that brown. And what it looks like when it's brand new, it's that bright white kind of beige. So we will put new into the filter bag. We, of course, clean the filter bag as well to make sure that the we still get good flow through it we will dump out our row of foss because it is a uh, time to change these as well and then we will put new row of foss into the bag i just use a plastic spoon um, and scoop uh, a nice couple uh heaving teaspoons into the bag uh, for this tank for for my other tanks, depending on the size, use you know I use a little bit more. So I have the uh, contents of chamber two all clean and ready to be reassembled. So I will put uh, the filter pads back in and leave that first chamber, those filter pads exposed. And I will put in my row of FOSS into that first chamber you can see there i'm placing the row of foss into that first chamber kind of tucking it around uh, that light bracket to make sure i get it nicely spread out in that first chamber and then i'm going to uh, push you can see there it's nicely spread out and then i'm going to push the uh, filter pad down a bit and 
pass the bracket in order to have chamber two there, the top chamber of that filter pad um, ready, and I will put my Purigen in there again. We want it nice spread out in there so it gets good flow through it. And then we'll go ahead and push the rest of that filter pad down and um, have a nice clean chamber two. So we can then move on to chamber three. All right, so looking at chamber three here. Um, so again, I have the ceramic media in that chamber and uh, along with the pump and the heater. And instead of just dropping that ceramic media to the bottom, I have that ceramic media clipped. Uh, that way it's not sitting on top of the pump or on the heater or anything, and it maintains good flow around it. So again, there's the uh, ceramic media from that chamber. So I will again take some water from the tank and put it in the bucket and use this water for cleaning the contents of chamber three. So now that I have water in the bucket, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that ceramic media. I'll let the, kind of the water drain off it there. And once I get the ceramic media out, we will rinse it off in that bucket. I'm also going to uh, remove the inlet there in order to remove the return pump. So I'm going to unscrew that inlet there. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull up the return pump. Of course, I've unplugged the return pump. Um, and I'm pulling the end off it. Don't forget, there is a filter inside the return pump that protects that propeller from anything impacting it and damaging the pump. That filter can hold negative stuff for your tank. It can hold organic waste, etc., and that is bad. So you need to make sure that you're doing a full clean and that does include cleaning the filter of that return pump on a regular basis. Just like I recommended on some of the other tanks to clean the filter in the skimmer. Uh, this tank does not have a skimmer. Um, you need to make sure that you're cleaning all filter pads on a regular basis. Uh, so there I've cleaned the ceramic media. Um, I've put the return pump back in and I've put the, the end back on and now I'm putting the ceramic media back and I am clipping it back in place in order to have uh, chamber three fully cleaned. All right, so now that we have all the chambers clean, we need to go ahead and do our finish up and do our water change. So we need to make sure that we check the salinity. Um, I like to run mine at uh, 1026. So we'll check the salinity, uh, make sure that we're not going to add too much to bring it over or under. We want to keep it on par, and this is our time to do a little bit of an adjustment. Um, so we'll take out the rest of the water that we need to take out to complete our water change. We will plug our pumps back in, and the last thing to do is to go ahead and Fill the tank with our fresh water to complete the water change and filter maintenance is done. Uh, hopefully you like this. Hopefully you learned something around how to maintain your all-in-one filter. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Check out some more of my content and I will get more out soon. Thanks guys.